Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today's comparison is a viewer request. We're going to be checking out the Fender American Vintage 65 Jaguar that's completely stock, and seeing how well this one fares in comparison. This is a brand new Fender Japan FSR Traditional 60s that's similar in spec and obviously in look to its American counterpart. Although these guitars do look very similar to one another, there are some key differences between them. And a few things about this guitar in specific that are unique to it that a lot of people aren't fully aware of when they're checking these things out used on reverb. The first thing we're going to address is the neck itself, the shape. It's listed as a U. It just feels like a little bit of a fuller C. It's about 0.86 at the first fret, 0.94 at the 12th fret. So it's a really comfortable neck. It's by no means a thin neck, but it's also not overwhelming. However, more importantly than the actual profile of the neck itself is the width at the nut. This is a 40 millimeter nut. Compare that with a lot of different guitars that are available from Fender USA, and it's a bit more narrow. It's more kind of wide than what you would find on a vintage Fender Jaguar that has an A-stamped neck. Those were 38 millimeters, but it's by no means the standard that you're going to find on American guitars, which is typically going to be 42 millimeters, unless you're looking at a Johnny Marr. That one's a 41 millimeter nut. Also different from the American Jaguar, the nut on this one goes on top of the binding. So if you ever had a big problem with it, you'd be able to replace it fairly easily, which you would not be able to do on one of the American Vintage 65s. The fret wire is also different. These guitars come with medium jumbo frets. The AV65 comes with vintage size frets. The electrical layout though remains traditional and I do love and appreciate that. Regular old rhythm circuit right here, when you engage it, all other controls are bypassed. You have your three sliders right there for your pickup selections and your choke slash strangle. And then just one master volume, one master tone, and two traditional single coil pickups. These guitars come with a Mustang bridge. This has a stay charm bridge on it immediately, something I swapped. And I'll get into why that is after we do the sound demonstrations, but it is pretty cool that they do offer that as opposed to the vintage bridge that does come on the AV65. I don't mind the vintage bridge, but I know for some people, they kind of want to immediately get rid of that as well. The vibratos both have locks on them, albeit the designs are a little bit different. This is the Japanese one compared to the American one that comes on the AV65. Both have alder bodies, both have matching headstocks, both have binding on the neck, and then the finishes is the last real thing we're gonna to touch on before we start hearing these things. Poly finish on this one, thin skin nitro finish on the AV65. Today we're gonna to be using one pedal and one amp mic'd up by the 57. Brown amplification protein and the Dr. Z Z Plus. Reverb is gonna be coming from the amplifier.
You probably noticed in the sound comparison that these guitars also sound quite a bit different from one another. I love these pure vintage 65 pickups. There's a reason that Fender still have these in production as an aftermarket option and why so many players end up putting them into squires, into Japanese guitars, and into Mexican made instruments. They sound killer, man. Now, I don't think the ones that come stock in the Japanese Jaguar are bad per se, and in isolation, you probably wouldn't think that they were deficient, so to speak, but I mean, playing them back to back with this guitar, it's pretty obvious, and I'm left for the wanting. But at the end of the day, a pickup swap is an easy thing and relatively inexpensive if you're the one doing the work on your own. You could throw in a set of Lollers, Fralins, Novaks, name your brand, whatever, and you'd probably be making a pretty decent sized upgrade on the Japanese model. Before I switch back to the Japanese one, to give you a few final pieces of advice and address the bridge on that one that I alluded to earlier in the video, I want to make a comment about the stock vintage bridge on this one. How many times have you read people say that this is worthless, this sucks, you have to immediately throw it away, you can't bend with it, it's going to pop out of the saddles, you can't play hard with it, it's going to pop out of the saddles, it's not reliable, they sink, blah blah blah, I've heard it all. This guitar is perfect with this, it functions perfectly. There's no problems. If you set your guitar up right, and this is only set up with tens, no issues. Earlier in this video, I told you I put a stage drum on this thing pretty much immediately upon receiving it. Now I'm gonna to explain to you why I did that. This is the stock bridge. If you look at them, they look really similar, but there's one thing that makes a significant difference to how the guitar feels to play, and that's the string spacing. These ship with a 56 millimeter bridge like this one, the Stay Trem and the Johnny Marr one have a 52 millimeter. Big difference. Why? Because the E strings are now closer in from the edges. And especially since this is a 40 millimeter nut, you don't want them towards the edges. And one thing I've learned from having a few different versions of this special run in different colors, you want that. It's worth the extra money to either put in a stay trim, or if you don't want to spend that much, you could put in the Johnny Marr bridge. You could pick one of those up from Darren Riley's guitar parts for about 80 bucks. It's well worth the upgrade. The playability of the guitar greatly, greatly improves from that. The last thing I'm going to leave for your own consideration before I talk about how I feel and perceive each one of these guitars and which one I prefer out of the two of them, keep in mind that this comes with one of the cheapest, flimsiest gig bags you will ever see from a Fender product, while the American Vintage 65 is going to come with a nice G&G &G hard shell case. So, it might sound like I've pretty much downplayed these guitars a lot. That's not the case though, because honestly, that American Vintage 65 is just incredible. 
Everything about it is incredible. That's like the ideal Fender Jaguar reissue if you like vintage specs. But this guitar has a lot going for it. And switching back and forth during the sound demonstrations, it was kind of an adjustment more so than normal due to the nut width. But it leads to different inspiration when I play each one of them. They each have their strong suits going for them. They got their own vibe. And the fact that it's really difficult to find guitars like that American Vintage 65 on the used market and when you do oftentimes they're extremely expensive it's nice knowing that we do have alternatives such as this one another thing that's really a big pro in this guitar and this entire runs example compared to the american vintage series as a whole not just the american vintage 65 i'm talking the 62s as well in general it is way easier to find a lighter one of these well under eight pounds is not that uncommon. When you look at the American models, that's almost an anomaly. So if you're somebody that prefers a lighter instrument, this might be something that you want to take a look at. Last thing I forgot to mention before I tell you which one of these I prefer of the two. This one weighs a pound less than this one. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, considering that they have such similar parts on them. But if I had to pick between the two and I could only have one, it would be this one, the American Vintage 65. Now, this has a feel to it. Just like the American Vintage 65 Jazzmaster I have, these really are the best reissues that Fender USA have ever made, in my humble opinion. Yeah, this was a pound heavier than this one, but this balances so well. It's got this incredible neck feel on it. Fretwork is great on this guitar. The person that I got this from must have kept it in a closet because this has almost no signs of usage on it. And it's just, it's great. Whenever you pick up a guitar and you don't even think about modding anything on it, the only reason I took the mute off is because the rubber strip is worn out. I got to order a new one. Fantastic. That's all you could ever ask for. So this is going to be the forever Jag. But that's not to say that, again, I don't love the green one as well. It's just a little bit different. It inspires a little bit different playing, and that's the beauty of being able to have multiple guitars. Thank you for watching today's video. If you found it helpful, useful, and or entertaining, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what your thoughts are if you own either of these guitars or you're in the market for a Jaguar. And don't forget to tell somebody in your life that you love that you do love them. Life is short. Take it easy, everybody.